It's the 80K Q&A. I've taken your questions and now I'm going to answer them. So shoot. Did you actually quit your job? Do you still teach? Yes and yes, actually. You see, before the Patreon, I had two part-time jobs from which I assembled one full-time job. I taught at two colleges. I taught at a really, really bad college and a really, really awesome college. And because of the great success of the Patreon, I was able to quit one of those two jobs, the, the, the bad one, the bad one. So I do still teach. And what happened is, is the amount that the Patreon is for, keep in mind that not all of that funds every single month. There's a lot of declined payments and there's taxes and other fees. But in the end, it actually ends up being more or less what I was getting at the one college. So I was able to do a swap. So while my financial status hasn't shot up by thousands of dollars per month since the Patreon, because I did quit half of my work, I have been able to significantly improve my work lifestyle, as it were, because this is a lot better than that bad college. How do new players to this game know what type of deck is for them? The best way to know which type of deck is the deck for you is to play with as many different decks as possible. And this is mostly going to be done through proxying up decks and having friends or just partners down at the game store for you to practice with. Play as many possible decks as you can, and you'll begin to see which deck styles you like, which decks appeal to you, which decks you want to try and build for yourself. If you're a new player, or a returning player, or quite frankly, even a long-term player, proxying up decks for practice and exploration is critical to this game. What are your thoughts on the current prices of modern staples? The price of modern staples is too damn high. Where can I buy a t-shirt or a playmat? Well, if you want to sport the college emblem in t-shirt or playmat form, simply go to www.talariancommunitycollege.com. We now have more sizes available for men's and we have women's cuts available as well. So go check it out. Professor, who is the best Ravnica guild leader in terms of lore, not function? So since Tessa is not currently a guild leader, although last we heard she was going to assassinate the Orzov Council, that's interesting, uh, since Tessa is not currently a guild leader, the coolest in terms of lore, biggest in terms of just the character, guild leader is definitely Niv-Mizzet. I love, love, love that what makes Niv-Mizzet a terror and a powerhouse within the lore is not his giant size and strength as a dragon, but rather his intellect, his frightening intellect. That to me mwah, is beautiful flavor. What is your stance on buying cards in bulk or in large unsorted lots? Buying cards in bulk on Amazon or eBay, buying these giant thousand card unsorted lots on Amazon and eBay, buying repacks on Amazon or eBay, these are all, as far as I'm concerned, scams. Maybe some of them out there might, 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 might be legitimate, but the overwhelming majority of them are essentially just people taking advantage of you. Do not buy repacks. Do not buy giant thousand card lots where they don't have a list of cards. You're not going to get dual lands and planeswalkers in those lots. You are going to get less than what you spent. You're going to get cards that they can't sell individually because nobody wants them individually. What do you think would happen to Standard if Damnation were reprinted? In all honesty, I don't think that reprinting Damnation in Standard would really have a monumental effect, no more so than any of the other monumental cards that they print. How much of a monumental effect has Abbot of Care Keep had in Standard or any one of the Planeswalkers that gets printed in every set? We have cards that make dramatic impacts upon Standard. I am actually all in favor of more reprints more often, and I hope now that standard is changing, we'll get to see that, but I'm not too optimistic. 
What are your all-time favorite tribes, color combinations, guilds, shards, decks, deck archetypes, and all of that stuff? Okay, let's see if I can do this all in one take really, really quickly. Favorite guild, is it? Favorite shard, Esper. Favorite tribe, Merfolk. Favorite color, I love all colors. How do you handle unpleasant players at Friday Night Magic? Well, it depends on how unpleasant they're being. Remember, sometimes some people just are having a bad day. Uh, I think that the best thing that you can do is try to ignore it, try to get through the game as best you can, and if at all possible, be the bigger player. Don't engage, don't try and do a tit for tat, or try and be more obnoxious or make their experience unpleasant and kind, but be bigger than they are, be better than they are. That being said, some people can be particularly unpleasant, and I think that you should not hesitate to talk to the judge of that event uh, and let them know about what is going on in terms of their behavior, because it may indeed be so unacceptable that the judge can and should intervene. Or if it is just a in-store tournament, maybe not a major uh, sort of event where a judge is present, talking privately and calmly and collectively to that store owner or manager about the frustrations that you're feeling. Hopefully your store wants to retain you as a player and a customer and also wants to create a hospitable environment. And chances are other people are having those frustrations as well. And then the store owner or manager or judge can speak appropriately to that player. But the best advice I have is to try not to let it affect you and to try not to be unpleasant in kind. What do you think about the fact that starting with Battle for Zendikar, there will no longer be seeded packs in pre-release kits? I am very much in favor of them getting rid of the seeded boosters. I think that the seeded booster packs influence sealed constructed in a way that, while perhaps a little relaxing to some players, ultimately was not really good for the format. And I'm a big fan of just give me six booster packs and let me build a sealed constructed deck. Now, I do like that they have the promo as one rare or mythic from that set in a foil with the date stamp. I mean, sure, alternate art would be cool, but that would be probably far too much art for them to offer. Being able to play with it, I guess. I'm actually not a fan of that, but it doesn't bother me as much as those seeded boosters did. I really disliked the seeded boosters. Uh, I'm so happy to be getting six, six booster packs again, and now with that rare or mythic promo that's included, pre-release just became all the more worth it because you're getting seven rares or mythics with that pre-release kit. It's awesome. What's better, elves, merfolk, or goblins? Merfolk. Oh, did you mean like in terms of which deck is strong? It doesn't matter. Merfolk. The answer is merfolk. Even if they're not as strong in one particular format as elves or goblins, the answer is always merfolk. Listen, I'm just going to say merfolk to whatever it is you're asking. What character from Magic's past do you want to see return? I'd love to see Teferi make a reappearance. I know that he's probably dead due to old age since the mending, but he was also a time mage and temporal planeswalker. And so if anybody could travel through time or have some kind of temporal shift, it would likely be Teferi. And I thought he was a very interesting character. I think of him a little bit as the Doctor Who of Magic the Gathering. Uh, we recently also got some name drops of Jaya Ballard, and I really, really love her character. So much more interesting than Chandra. Sorry, Chandra fans, but Jaya is really cool. And there were hints at Maybe she's still around somewhere. Chandra's looking for her. I'd love to see more work done with some of the old walkers and the old lore. We don't need to go back to Urza versus the Phyrexians again, but I don't think that we need to just flush all those old characters down the drain. Would you want to live in the Khans or Dragons timeline of Tarkir? 
neither. I'm not really interested in living in or even visiting as a planeswalker Tarkir. Now, keep in mind, I'm just saying from a if magic were real kind of standpoint. I actually really liked the Tarkir block. Well, I really liked cons of Tarkir. Uh, but as far as Tarkir the plane is concerned, what a chaotic, death and rage-filled place. There's nowhere that you could really just chill out and make a life for yourself. So I wouldn't be too interested in spending much time in Tarkir here, I'd probably get eaten and attacked constantly. Do you have any pets? If so, what are their names? I used to have a lot of pets when I was a kid. Right now, I don't personally own any pets, although my wife has a cat. I suppose it's my cat as well. Uh, and the cat's name is, and this is her actual name, as named by my wife, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. We, we call her Zelda, but her real name is The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. She's a calico cat. Favorite food? Oh, I love so many of the foods that this plane has to offer. But I guess I would say that my favorite food, if I had to choose one, would be sushi. If you could add anything to magic or the magic community, what would it be? Ah, add anything. And specifically, the question was to add something, not take away. So to add something, I guess I would add player rewards for Friday Night Magic players. What are your thoughts on the Eldrazi as cards? Do you prefer them bigger like they were in the original Zendikar block or smaller as they are rumored to be in the return to Zendikar block? I'm not a big fan of the original Eldrazi cards. I don't like what I call I win cards, meaning cards that once they resolve, essentially you have won the game unless your opponent can really and rarely pull a trick out of their hat. And so I don't enjoy that. I don't enjoy having some 50-50 creature with Annihilator, 1 million or whatever, can't be countered, protection from all colors, take five extra turns after this. It's just ridiculous to me. Even though it has a high mana cost, there's always ways to cheat it into play, to accelerate to it. It works other formats. I don't even really like the Eldrazi, therefore, as creatures, uh, in terms of their function as cards, not in terms of the lore or mythos. Not something I'm a fan of. So if indeed we are not going to see these I win card style Eldrazi return, I, I haven't heard an official word on that. Maybe I missed it. If I did, whoo -hoo, that sounds nice, but not a big fan of that. Not a big fan at all. What's your kid's name? My son's name is Miles, with an I. Do you think the legacy format is ever going to die? I do not think the legacy format will die, although obviously, largely because of the reserved list and in other ways a lack of support from Wizards of the Coast, there is a lot of obstacles and hurdles for legacy, but I don't think that it's going to die any more than vintage or original Highlander are going to die. People still play the formats they love, but legacy definitely has those big obstacles. It's not going anywhere, though. Also, I hope that Legacy doesn't die because I love it. <laughs> That's not a question, but I agree. I love Legacy too. I should do some Legacy videos, yeah. What do you believe is the easiest deck to get into Modern? I believe the best way to get into Modern or Legacy or most formats, Standard, if you're not currently in Standard, is to just do so through a mono red deck. They are usually the cheapest, they are the easiest to pilot, and they actually do have a chance of winning. Sometimes more, sometimes less. But I always, like when I first got into Modern, I just put Mono Red together and sat down and played, and I began to learn what the other deck types were, how they functioned, and set my sights on a deck that I liked. Same thing for Legacy. When I first sat down to play Legacy, I just built Mono Red, Burn, in Legacy. No, I didn't come in first in my Friday, or it wasn't Friday Night Magic, in the Sunday Legacy events at my local game store, but I had a really good time playing and I learned the other decks and was able to make a decision. So I recommend for Modern, for all formats, if you don't have anything and you don't know what you want, see about putting a budget mono red deck together and just sitting down and playing. What card or card type do you like the least? Definitely the card or card type that I like the least are Planeswalkers. Sorry, I really, really dislike Planeswalker cards. What is your opinion of the Annihilator mechanic? 
I do not like the Annihilator mechanic for the reasons that I stated when I was talking about the Eldrazi as cards in terms of function. I don't like cards that if it drops, the game is essentially over and that you can't interact with. This is not something that I'm a fan of. I want to get a game of magic. I don't want you to drop your super I win card onto the board and, well, it doesn't matter what I've done up to that point or what I have in my hand, with rare exception, the game is now essentially over because you just cast this one card. It's supposed to be chess, not punch out. Wow, thank you, thank you all for bringing us all the way. We're just under 85,000 subscribers. I can't believe it. We're coming at two years for the channel. I definitely am going to start streaming, so stay tuned. Like me on Facebook and Twitter if you want to get those announcements. Check out TolarianCommunityCollege.com, and see you next time.